actually threw a bottle yesterday. So we're gonna throw a chuck, a wet chuck, to trim my bottle that I threw yesterday. It has a little taller neck, it's a little smaller body, and it's nice, you know, good, good, good weight to, to um, or good dryness weight. Gosh, Rita. It's a good, good level of dryness to trim, but I want to trim the bottom and I can't, you know, tip it upside down. So I'm going to throw a chuck, which is sort of a volcano shaped thing. And I'm going to throw it as dry as I can because I do not want it to be wet. So I'm going to, you got to use a certain amount of, of wet to keep your hands from sticking. But, and to get it centered, you want it centered because what I'm going to do then is I'm going to set the neck inside of the chuck so that I can trim the bottom. Okay, so in this case, I need a fairly tall chuck, right? So I've centered high and high and narrow, relatively speaking, and I'm going to open, and I'm going to open all the way to the base, like straight on through, because I'm looking for something that I can set that neck in, right? And then we're going to pull the wall up just a hair here. until it is tall enough I think that might do it and I'm gonna take and I'm gonna take a really dry sponge before I do anything else and I'm gonna dry off this top as much as I possibly can because I'm gonna set my bottle on in there so that I can trim it. But first we're gonna check, I think that might not be tall enough now that I look. Oof. It's important to have really dry, clean hands when you're handling greenware that is, you know, leather hard. Otherwise you will leave little bits of clay all over. So here we are, let's see. Nope, it's not quite tall enough. So we're gonna pull it a little bit taller. I'm gonna And I'm going for really dry here. We're going to do one more trick pull, I think, should do it probably. This is not... The only important thing about this is that it's centered. It doesn't have to be neat. And you can, and I may, depending on how wet it is. In this case, the clay was dry enough. I think I can get away with it. Um, you can, for example, take a heat tool and dry it off. Ha ha, look at there. So we're gonna get this properly centered on here. And then I can trim this bottom. Um, some people make these and fire them. I tend to not do that. Okay, so again, I got that little chunk going on. I'm gonna rasp off that bottom right there. I can get rid of all the little, little bits. So it feels like the center of this is very, very thin and the edges are thick enough. So part of what I want to do is trim it in so that it has a narrower base. Oops, that's not quite. Let's make sure we're sitting there centered. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, so we're going to very gently, because there's not a lot holding this here. I got it sitting in the, I mean, 
you could do things, but I'm pretty careful about how I trim, and I tend... I don't like sticking the pieces down if I can possibly help it, because that tends to mar the surface. So, I am going to trim off that edge a couple times here so that I get a really nice round, round, <laughs> my hands don't end up, I use my hands to talk and then you can't see them, a really nice round bottle. Um, It doesn't need a ton of trimming, which is nice because it doesn't have a whole bunch of weight in the bottom. So, and you'll notice again as I trim, I'm doing a lot of holding my hand. You know, I put my other hand here and hold my hand still and brace both arms on something as I'm trimming so that I can hold my hand absolutely still. If you don't do that, the, the piece of pottery will actually shove your tool around and you won't get a nice trimming job. All right, now, I think that's about all I want to do to that. I'm gonna grab my rib, my trusty red rib, and I'm gonna dry it off. It's been sitting in slip water. Don't want that. And I'm gonna take it and I'm going to get rid of the, so when you trim off the outside of a piece, you can see that you have trimmed it. And in this case, because most of it is com going completely untrimmed, I don't really want it to show and I don't know that I ever really want it to show, but if I'm going to carve a piece or something, it's less important to get all of the outside looking the same. But in this case, I'm going to let it dry and fire it just as it is. So, I don't want... any marks from where I trimmed it, if I can help it. So I'm gonna burnish the outside, even where I didn't trim. I'm gonna kinda of run it on there and shine it up a little bit. And I should be able to get that off of there, hopefully. And there we have. Now we're gonna I'm going to take my finger and burnish out this little line made from the uh, chuck so that it is gone. And then I'm going to, oops, I guess I really didn't show that. When you take it off the chuck, you get a little line off and from the chuck. I'm going to burnish that. Um, you will notice that this particular little bottle. I left the top, the flared top, irregular. It's kind of thin, it's kind of cute, kind of organic feeling. I like that. All right, so we're gonna burnish this, clean it up nicely. If you're gonna burnish with a rib, you want to set the rib um, parallel to where, you know, put it on flat and then pull it down 
using the rib or you will leave little like kind of hash marks where you set the rib down on it. All right, so we're gonna turn this over and we're gonna sign it. I need my stylus. I used to sign with a pin tool. I find now that I don't care for a pin tool to sign with. I much prefer this wooden, I don't even know, you know, I don't know what kind of tool it's supposed to be, but I like it. So there we got a sign. It's an original Orla. There we go.